I know that uh, this is probably going to be a touchy subject, as you can tell from the headline. Um, it's it's all about you know cutting uh, or self mutilation, but cutting in you know in specific. Um, I myself am a recovering cutter. Um, I haven't cut in almost seven years. Um, I'm very proud of myself. It took it it took a lot to get where I am now, but um, I was glad that I was able to kick the habit. I was doing it for like six years, five or six years. Um, and I know how hard it can be for, for you to stop. So the first thing I'm going to do is go through the four reasons I feel that people cut. Um, and then I'm hoping that, uh, I can kind of <clears throat> give some suggestions as to how to get, get help, um, e internally as well as, you know, in your community and your friends, family, that kind of stuff. So, um, first and foremost, I want to start with the one, the reason I did it. Um, I, I've been through a lot, as I've said in other videos. Um, and I mean, I was doing it to deal with the physical pain as opposed to the emotional pain. Um, it, it's one of those things that you feel when you have pain emotionally, you feel like there's nothing you can do to get rid of it. Um, it's there, it's toxic energy it's toxic thoughts and um you know just it seems like the easiest way to get rid of them is to you know deter your mind away from it and punching walls cutting um beating yourself up you know that it's it takes your mind off of it um i mean it's almost the the same thing of you know you uh, have a toothache, you take a painkiller. Um, it, it's not doing anything for your toothache, um, as far as, you know, the infection or anything like that, but it makes it j just easier to deal with. Um, then there's, um, people that need to take control over something in their life. Um, the one thing that you can always control is yourself, your body. Um, a lot of people who are anorexic and bulimic, um, also do, uh, things for that reason. Um, some people just, you know, there's just so much chaos in their life. There's so much controversy and, you know, hatred and, you know, complicated situations and stuff that they just don't feel that there's anything that they can latch onto that they feel they're in control of. And so, you know, they wind up doing it because of that. Um, there's also the ones that I feel, um, are the most, I hesitate to use the word interesting, but um, it's one that I I can relate to in a sympathetic way. I guess I can I can understand why they would do it um, as well. Uh, it's the release, the the euphoric release. Um, you know, I know this is going to seem you know, a little graphic, but you know, you 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 take the blade and you run it across your skin and you see the blood coming out, and it's it's euphoric. It's, it's a release that you can't get in any other form. Um, I feel that the people that do it for that, um, are lacking something in their life, um, probably emotionally. Um, but there, I mean, it's also possible that, you know, physically, um, maybe the, the loss of, um, a significant other or, um, just, uh, something they feel they deserve, but they don't have, um, Last but not least, um, I feel uh, this is the one that um, I think I want to go into the most detail about is uh, for attention. Um, there is such a derogatory undertone to um, saying that people cut for attention, um, and I think that's completely false. Um, as human beings, and especially as teenagers, there's a, there's a sort of a certain amount of attention that you need, you crave, you, you, you actually do need it. Um, you know, drug addicts that, that get to a point where they just take so much that they can't handle it. I mean, it's, it's a cry for help. They want somebody to say, Hey, you have a problem. And, you know, they need the help from other people to do that, obviously. Um, and I really hate when people look at cutters that do it for attention as immature or, um, they're doing it because they think it's cool or something. Um, I'm sure there are people out there that do it to try to be trendy and that sucks because that puts a bad 
image on the people that actually do need help and need the support of the people around them. Um, as far as um, ways to kind of try to get yourself away from doing things like this, um, one of the things that I found that worked, um, it, it, it would, it didn't, you know, completely get rid of it. Obviously, there's a lot of steps that you need to take. Um, it's something that you really need to de dedicate yourself to. But one of the things was, I wrote down every single thing that came to my head. Um, I have so many notebooks full of things that make absolutely no sense. Um, but to me, at that time, I needed to write it down. I needed to get it out of me. I needed somewhere, some, somehow to get these toxic thoughts out of me. And it was a sense of release in, in a way. I mean, there are even s some ways, you know, if you want to write down every single thing that you feel, every, I mean, I'm not talking things, you know, try to be poetic about it. I'm talking just write everything down, burn it, you know, throw it away, um, give it to somebody, something, you know, try to um, metaphorically even uh you know, release yourself from, from those thoughts. Um, also setting goals. I mean, um, somebody who's a perpetual cutter can say, okay, well, um, you know, if they do it every day, then, you know, give you, give yourself a day, say, I'm not going to do it for a day. Um, people always say, you know, especially, I mean, I smoke and somebody, for somebody to come up to me and say, all right, don't smoke for three days. That sounds like an eternity to me. Um, and I know it's the same thing with cutters. So it's kind of, it's baby steps. You have to say, okay, I'm going to go a day without doing it and see if I can do it. Um, and if you can, you'll get a sense of happiness that you're, you're lacking. You'll get, you know, a sense of accomplishment. You should never set your goals too high, um, because that's just going to make you want to do it more. Um, also, especially the ones that are doing it for attention, if you are doing it for attention and people aren't listening, um, you know, listening actually literally or listening metaphorically, talk to somebody that you can confide in and say, look, I want you to look after me. I want you to um, ask me how I'm doing. I want you to, you know, get, get these things out of me. You know, call me tomorrow and ask me if I've cut or, um, you know, when you come over, look at my arms, you will have this sense of responsibility at that point. And that can also be something for the ones that want to take control. Um, you know, you have a sense of responsibility that you have set with somebody that you can confide in and somebody that you trust. Um, and, and that can really, really help. Um, another thing I've noticed with people that do it for release are very creative. They're very, um, they, they have some type of creativeness in or creativity rather inside of them that is just wanting to get out. Um, painting, drawing, writing music, um, singing, uh, you know, some type of, um, any, any type of creativity, try it, give it a try. Don't, don't get frustrated. If it doesn't work, go on to another one. Um, I think that, you know, and it, you know, it's, it's a distraction and, um, you know, it's something that you can be doing as opposed to cutting. Um, so you're always going to want to look for distractions, you know, idle hands are the devil's work. Um, so are the devil's playground. I think that's it. whatever. Um, but I hope this has been, you know, informative and educational in a way. Um, hopefully I can help at least one person. If I help one person with this video, I'll be happy. Um, I'd love to know your views. Um, and I just hope that, you know, like I said, I hope that this has been helpful.